All right, good morning, everybody. We are here with uh, Thursday, October 22nd. And we're still getting some 60 degree mornings, so we'll take it while we have it. Um, great workout today, full body. It's still squat tober, so plenty of squats uh, in variations coming in today. I have a few movements uh, in the warm up that are new that I would like to demo real quickly for you. Um, so one of them is a ballistic row and you're going to be doing these warm ups with either a lighter kettlebell or dumbbell. Um, and for the ballistic row, what you're going to do, this is just kind of to stimulate our nervous system, get us going, but a regular, so we would start with our regular bent over row position. And when you row, you actually switch the weight with your hands at the top. So you're rotating through, that could be done with a dumbbell or a kettlebell. If that feels uncomfortable, you could slow it down and switch at the bottom. So you would row, lower, switch hands, row, lower, switch hands, row, lower, switch hands. So very deliberate to scale that and slow that down, okay? That's the ballistic row. Can you do it without where you didn't switch hands at the bottom again? Yes. It's kind of like a, a toss, not a toss, but you're, you're, you're switching that up at that. I'm trying to see if the camera's in a, in a good, uh, in a good frame here. That's better for me to see myself here for you. Um, so you get in your bent over row position as you row, when you come up, that's when you're switching. So here there's like a little toss at the top there. Okay. All right. So try that with lightweight. It's just for the warm up. We're not actually doing those during the workout, but that's to kind of get us, get us moving there. Um, we are also doing some squat cleans with a single kettlebell or a dumbbell. And so for those, you are gonna hold it by the horns. You see, I got too many things out under my feet here. So think about when we're in the gym, we do the med ball cleans, same kind of idea. We're gonna start with our hands on the horns here. We're gonna come up, switch them underneath and go into our squat clean and then go down again. So switch them up, come down, down, switch them up, switch those hands around. If you have a dumbbell, and are doing that with a dumbbell instead, that dumbbell is gonna be upright and vertical. And you're gonna start on the head. When you get to the top, you're gonna to shrug and tuck your hands under like a goblet squat. So here to here, touch here to here. So we're getting deep into that squat. The only other move I wanna demo for you before we get going and everything else I'll, I'll demo within the context of our warm up and rest is a lateral mountain climber. I had to look this one up and confirm with Beth, but we start in our regular plank position here. I'm gonna have one leg out to the side, one leg in the middle, and we're gonna go laterally. So out to the side, bring the other one to the middle, back and forth as opposed to our normal mountain climber where we'd be bringing them in, just shifts the demand of the core a little bit. So we'll have time to play around with that in the warm up, and then that's part of our finisher. All right, everything else is basically standard. You wanna decide what you're gonna do for your cardio. You have run, 100 meters, row, ski, 0.2K bike, jump rope in the workout for 30 seconds or burpees. I'm probably doing, I think I'm gonna do burpees today uh, just because, but we're gonna start on that cardio and our warm up, like it has been is 40 seconds on 20 off. So just take a second to make sure you get your workout area in order, have any weights out that you wanna have, water, know what cardio you're doing and we'll get started in about a minute, all right? Unless there are any questions too. If there are any questions, shoot them out. All 
All right. And again, I would, if you have a few different weights, that wouldn't be bad, just so you, you can raise or lower as you need to. And I will cue you through. I'll, I'm going to be using a kettlebell, so I'll demo with that, but then I'll also demo with, um, I'll also demo with dumbbells as we are going through our motions. All right. Let me get the clock set up here. We are doing eight minutes on, uh, not eight minutes on. Well, it is eight minutes, but 40 seconds on, 20 seconds of work. In 10 seconds, you're starting with 40 seconds of whatever cardio you are choosing for the day. In three, two, one, go. Remember, this is warm up, so we're just getting our body moving. Not trying to break any land speed records. Oh, it's early. Might be feeling it from earlier workouts in the week. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, rest. All right. Next round, we're doing a dumbbell overhead press or a kettlebell overhead press. You can hold it by the horns, press up. It's also okay to hold it by the bell and the horn and press up. If you have a dumbbell, hold it horizontally by both heads. Breathe out as you exhale, or exhale as you press up. When you go overhead, really squeeze those glutes, tuck the core, don't let that back arch. Elbows, biceps covering the ears, poke the head through the hole. All right, next one are the, those ballistic bent over rows, right? Ballistic bent over rows. So again, you could switch at the top more quickly or slow it down and switch at the bottom. Stand up with it first and get going. So you're just bringing it up and then that one moment at the top where it's like weightless for a second, you're switching your hands there. Or I'm slowing it down, switching at the bottom. Either way is good. 10 more seconds. Two, one, stand up with it first. Now we're gonna start with our normal goblet squat, and then we're gonna switch over to those squat cleans halfway through. So again, goblet squat, you can hold the horns or the bell. If you feel like you wanna pause a second, that's fine. Get those knees working. And one more rep and then switch over. So with that clean, you start on the floor, get your hands up and underneath. And stand up with it. Get that shrug involved. One, rest. All right, now we're gonna do a deadlift and we're gonna add an explosive deadlift to it. I meant to demo this. So our normal deadlift, we would just stand up. Explosive, we add a plyometric element to it. So start just with your regular deadlift. 
protecting your back going down, touching that weight. If you're using a dumbbell, you're holding that vertically. One more. And now we touch and add that jump. Touch, jump. If this, if you have any ankle or knee issues, hip issues, stick with straight deadlifts. Two, one. Woo! We got a lot of those later. All right, now we're going into that lateral mountain climber. When you're down into that down position, start with one leg in the middle, one leg out, and rotate them side to side, or alternate side to side, not really rotating. Feel that in your side abdominals, intercostals. Just keep working it. Two, one, rest. We're gonna stay on the ground now and do a side plank tap or a lateral plank tap. So we've done the forward ones before. We're just gonna set up in high plank and tap out to the side. Go, so come out, tap to your side, reach straight out. Try not to let those hips shift too much. Keep them parallel to the ground, facing the floor. Don't let that hip come up with the arm that you're tapping. You're gonna to wanna to try and twist into that. So fight that resistance, keep that hip down. Two, one, rest, and then we're gonna stay on the ground for our last warm up move and do a weightless Russian twist. So you can put your hands together. I like to lace my knuckles. You can do feet up or feet down, depending on how you wanna scale. The big thing here is make sure that you're following your collarbone. Make sure your head's following your collarbone. You don't want to just throw your hand side to side. You want to make sure that you're getting the full twist. Later on in the finisher, we'll be doing these with weight. Touch that ground. Five seconds. Three. Two, one, and rest. All right. Great warm up. Let's grab a little water. Some people would be done with the workout, but not us. All right. Here we go. So now we're going to move into strength portion. A little bit different strength portion that we're working on today. We're gonna do 50 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. So a little bit longer domain than we've been working under interval wise. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do eight to 12 strict presses, push presses, push jerks. Now, if you're using a kettlebell, you're coming from a good front rack. Good front rack means that my elbow is into my ribs. My thumb is by my collarbone. The bell is resting on my wrist and my wrist is nice, relaxed and neutral. From here, if I'm pressing, I'm rotating out, pressing up and then bringing it back down. Rotating out, pressing up. As I said, you could push jerk um, or push press or push jerk if you have to, same idea. 
All right, so if you're using a kettlebell, really work on that positioning. And you could also use your hand to help you get it up into that front rack. After you do your eight to 12, and you should dictate that number by your weight, your weight's a little more challenging, shoot towards eight reps. If it's a little lighter, shoot towards 12. If you need to scale even more or uh, make it even more demanding, you could add a three second negative to that. But once you hit your number, for the remainder of the 50 seconds, you're gonna do a static hold, isometric. So should have about 20 seconds or so where you're holding. So we do eight to 12, hold for the remainder of the 50, 10 seconds off. Do the same thing on the left side. We are then going to do a bent over row, not ballistic, but just a normal bent over row, one, one arm. And then the static hold for the bent over row is holding it in front rack. So, we went over the front rack with the kettlebell. If I'm in a dumbbell, I'm gonna do my eight to 12 rows and then pop it up into my dumbbell front rack, one head touching one shoulder, all right? We're gonna do each of those three times through. So it's 12 minutes, 50 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Questions, so I already said you could do strict press, push, press, push, jerk. I talked about using your free hand and this, the negative. Questions about the strength portion while I'm getting the clock ready. Are we alternating or are we doing One arm for the whole 50 seconds and then another arm for the whole 50 seconds. Okay, I think I'll, I'll start with my kettlebell, but it's pretty light. So then I may yep. move to a dumbbell. And so I may do different things, different rounds. That's fine. I probably will too, just to demo the different types of moves. So I think that's totally fine. Um, it's nice to get some of that kettlebell practice. They are kind of taxing on your forearms. I got bands to kind of protect myself, wristbands here to protect my arms for whenever I do kettlebell work. Um, all right. So yes, yeah, switch as you need to. And again, Steph, if it feels light, you could add a negative to it. That's totally fine. Um, all right, everybody feel good? So I'm still not clear. Yep. We're doing presses, 50 seconds, 50 seconds. You're doing eight to 12 presses, then you're holding it out for the remainder of the time. Then the other side. And then. Then here, then here. Yeah, it's four different movements, three times through. All right, here we go. We're starting off with our right arm overhead presses. In three, two, one, go. Really concentrate on good movement. We're all gonna be doing different times because we're choosing different numbers for what's right for us. Lock it out. Time under tension. Three, two, one. Rest, bring it down. We're gonna have 10 seconds to transition to the left arm. Shake it out a little bit. This unilateral work is great for addressing imbalances. You might find that your right or left side is stronger or feels more comfortable, and that's not uncommon. It also adds a little element to the core because we have to stabilize more. Three, two, 
three, two, one, good. Now we're going over to the bent over row. Remember to deadlift the weight up and stand up all the way first. Get in that good position, right arm is rowing. Using my left to balance. And then when you're ready, get it up into that front rack and hold that position. <sighs> 10 seconds. Two, one, and rest. Same thing, we're gonna switch over to the left now. Again, deadlift that weight up first to protect your back. Stand up with it, shoot those hips back. I like to put my off arm out. When you're ready, get into that front rack. Really tighten everything up. Don't get up here and just kind of flop and rest. Good posture. I'm externally rotating my legs from my ankles, squeezing my glutes, and we're resting. Going back to the top. Overhead. Three, two, one. I'm switching to a dumbbell. With the dumbbell, I'm just holding it in neutral grip. Right here, my quads are locked, my glutes are locked, my elbow is locked. Five seconds. Good. I'm working on myself. I tend to arch my back, so I'm really working on that. Other side by thinking about contracting my core. Once you're up there, just breathe. Go someplace else so you don't think about the burning. Three, two, one, and bring it down. Now we're going back to the row and the front rack. Three, two, one, go. And then you could hang clean that up to your shoulder, holding that position. Three, 
And good rest to the left. Play with those number of reps. If eight doesn't do it, go to 10. 10 doesn't do it, go to 12. If 12 doesn't do it, add that three second negative. Squeezing that shoulder blade at the top. Right at 20 seconds, get that hold in. One head touching your shoulder. Five more seconds here, one more round of everything. And rest. All right, last round. Lock that elbow out, tuck your belly button in, squeeze your glutes. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, one more round of shoulder overhead on the left. And we're locked out. Three, two, one, and bring it down. Good job. Hang in there. Two more rounds with the bent over. Yep, I'm feeling in my shoulders too, Susan. Here we go. Stand up with it. Woo! Hit that number. Into your front rack. Ten seconds. Hang in, and one more round on the left side. Two, one, rest. Last one. Last one, best one. Three, two, one, go. And we're holding. Just breathing and getting strong on a Thursday morning. Three, two, one, and done.
All right, great work. That was tricky business on the shoulders there. <laughs> All right, grab a sip of water, towel off if you need to. Check on your dog if they're barking outside at 6.30 in the morning. And we are going into two five minute climb the ladders. So how's this gonna work? We're gonna have, so recently our five minute climb the ladder, or our climb ladders have been seven minutes last week. This week they're five minutes. We're doing a two to one work to rest ratio. So we're gonna work for five minutes. We're gonna get two and a half minutes of rest. And then we're gonna work for another five minutes. What is the first climb the ladder? I'm glad you asked. First climb the ladder is uh, those explosive deadlifts and whatever your cardio choice is. So if you're running, it's 100 meters. If you're rowing or skiing, it's 100 meters. If you are biking, it's a 0.2K. If you're doing jump rope or burpees, it's about 30 seconds of those moves. What I would do for burpees if you're doing them or what I'm gonna do is get an idea of how many I'm doing in the first 30 seconds and then just try and hit that number each time. You do the same thing with your jump rope too. If, if you see I can do 30 jumps in 30 seconds, that's an easy way without having to worry about watching your clock. So how does this go? You're gonna do three explosive deadlifts. Our X is 53 and 35, and I showed you both ways to do them. So we're gonna do three of those deadlifts, then your cardio. Then we come back and do six of those deadlifts, explosive deadlifts, then your cardio. Then nine, cardio, 12, cardio, et cetera. So you keep upping the explosive deadlifts by three, your cardio stays the same every time. That's the only two moves for that workout. All right, so it's five minutes of just taking on as many as you can. You wanna pick a weight that you can do about nine unbroken with. All right, so these are, are gonna get taxing for sure. Um, if you remember from the warm up not too long ago. <laughs> um, so pick a weight that is good for you. And again, modify for injury. So if your ankles or knees or hips are bothering you, I would encourage you to deadlift and not do the plyometric movement. Um, so do what good, feels good for your body. It's no good if you're trying to do something and then you're twisted on an ankle or something. All right, so take some time to get your weight together. Just to preview, the second wad is gonna be the squat cleans and cardio. So same thing, two moves, three reps cardio, six reps cardio with the squat cleans that we did in the beginning. So I would take some time to get your weights in order. If you're gonna use a dumbbell or a kettlebell, what weight you're using and uh, just get set up. We'll start the clock in about a minute or so, minute and a half. So Eric, a question on the, if I'm using a dumbbell, yeah. Okay, let me get this down. Yep, go ahead. So, do I just have it here and then like this? Yep, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then when you were doing the squat clean, did it feel okay when you were transitioning your hands underneath? I couldn't figure out how to do that. You're gonna go, think about, so Steph, think about like, you know when we do our med ball cleans, how we start with our hands down and then tuck under? Same idea. So you'll start with that squat clean the same way you were just doing your deadlift. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the top, okay. you're gonna go from here, just kind of toss it up and get those hands under for the goblet. Okay. Yep, you're twisting your palms, exactly. So from here to here. With the kettlebell, if you have a kettlebell, okay. you're going from here to here, same thing. And then switching them back. All right, so I would play around with that. Again, kind of pick a weight that feels good. And these are gonna get spicy quickly. That's why it's only five minutes. It's a shorter domain. We don't wanna be taking breaks. If we don't have to, I'm sure at some point we all will. 
<laughs> um, but move at a pace that you can try and sustain for those five minutes. Okay, I have our clocks ready and I'll stop part of the way through and uh, I'll give any cues early on in case, because these are short workouts. No, first is your three explosive deadlifts followed by your cardio. All right, everybody good? Um, I'm taking a quick sip. Here we go. So we are starting in 10 seconds with our three explosive deadlifts followed by your standard cardio and increasing by three reps each time, increasing by three reps each time. All right, I'm set up. I got my weight here. And again, I would pick, depending on what kind of cardio option you were doing, just take a look at your clock and figure, or if you know, hey, I do 12 burpees in 30 seconds or 10 burpees in 30 seconds, whatever it is, just hit that number. And we're starting in 10. Three, two, one. Go. Adding three each time. Good. All right, good. Make sure you're hinging your hips to get those deadlifts. Woo! Two minutes left. Once you get higher, 
reps, you might break them up into halves, six and six for 12. Under a minute. Thirty seconds. Hang in. seconds. Three, two, one, rest. Wow. I gotta work on my legs more y'all because that was hard. <laughs> oh. It's amazing how much a little jump can add to the resistance and load of that workout. All right, we got two minutes remaining before we start the next five. So catch your breath. This one again, we're doing that squat clean. Three reps, cardio, six reps, cardio, same routine. Whew. Hey, dude, if you were cooking on the run. <sighs> Scores, just so you know, are based on the uh, kettlebell movement. So I can let you know when we're done, if you'd like, but it's also the scales and Zen planner. If you got to nine, that was 18, 12 is 30, 15 is 45, nine is 18 reps. So we're counting only the, the exploding deadlifts. A little less than a minute. So let's get our minds right, get ready for the next round. You know what to do cardio wise. I'm actually gonna join in late. I'm gonna watch you all do your first few reps of squat cleans. 30 seconds and then I will join in. So definitely think about getting low into your squat, full range of motion, getting under, keeping the weight close, shrugging all the same techniques we would normally use for a clean. 10 seconds. Here we go, get ready. Three, two, one, go. Great. Those all look great.
adding three reps each time. Good, keep moving through. Nice transition. Good. Nice depth, Maya, good. Susan looking nice and smooth there, good movement. Under two minutes. Under 60. Hang in there. Catch our breaths a minute. And then let me check the time. All right. We have enough time for two rounds of a cardio finisher. And then <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do. Right after that, um, two rounds, so 6.30, 30. We're gonna do two rounds of a cardio finisher for six minutes. And then I will do our normal five minutes of mobility. It's gonna go a little bit over our time because there was a lot to describe today and demo. 
So if you feel like you need to go, feel free and then pop that video on later and do it later in the day, that's fine. Uh, I won't be insulted, but uh, I wanna make sure we get the uh, cardio or the mobility on the recording. All right, so we're gonna do two, two rounds, three moves, two times through. The lateral mountain climbers, the plank taps laterally, and the Russian twist with a, with a weight. So have a kettlebell or dumbbell you wanna use for a Russian twist. We are gonna start with those mountain climbers. It's 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest, one to one. Woo. Here we go, in 10. So we're starting on the ground. Two, one, go. And just going side to side, bringing one to the middle, one to the out, one to the outside. Think about good quality of movement here. Good stable positioning through your hands and arms and shoulders. Three, two, one, rest. Next round, we're going into the lateral plank taps. If you wanna scale it up, do it on one leg. If you want to make it a little less challenging, widen your base. Three. Two, one, go. So get that good plank. All the same movement qualities and standards apply. Straight line between your shoulders and your ankles. Don't create a valley with your back. Don't let your back sag. And we're touching out to the right and to the left. And again, the more narrow your stance, the more challenging, the wider. The more stable you get. And then moving into our Russian twist. Whew. This time we're using weight. If, if, if you don't have a good weight, continue with the body weight like we did, or no weight like we did in the warm up. Make sure you are following your collarbone. Three, two, one. You can do feet up. You can do feet down. Just pick what's right for you. Three. Two, one, rest. Doing that same thing one more time through. Whew. End of October, but we're still sweating out here. <laughs> Five seconds. Back to the lateral mountain climbers. Really engage your core. So squeeze your abs, tighten them up, help along the process. Three, two, one. I'm trying to slip on my mat here a little bit. All right, going to the plank taps next. And again, all these moves, when we make these little variations from forward to lateral, we're working on different planes of our body. And that's 
taxing our muscles and very small, small stabilizer muscles. Two, one, go in new and exciting ways that maybe our body isn't used to. And that is going to cause the body to adapt. That's going to give us more stability in our big movements and our Olympic lifts. Two, one, rest. And then back to that Russian twist for the last round. And then I am gonna go right into five minutes of mobility for us. We got 10 more seconds here. Last. Here we go. Follow it, look at it. See that weight. Look side to side. Feet are up. Or down, depending on what's good for you. Three, two, one, rest. All right, just give me a second to set our clock. Whoo, great work. Again, if you need to, Hop off. That's totally cool. Try and get the last scroll through and get the last five minutes of this video later on. If not, hang with me. We're going to be on the ground the whole time. First, just sit a little regular, uncomfortable cross legged position. We're going to start with an upper trap stretch. So I'm just holding my leg, I'm sitting up with my left. Right hands, I'm sorry. I'm pulling my right ear towards my right shoulder. And I'm just sitting here and breathing. And again, we did a lot of work on our shoulders, but sometimes we neglect stretching our neck and our upper traps, which is so important, especially now if we're sitting, if we're working from home. All right, switch to the other side. Really think about having good posture through your back. Think about shoulders back and down. And breathing. Nice, good breath. Hold it for a few and then breathe it out. Three, two, one. Now we're gonna go to that thread the needle, which I like so much, so. From your sort of child's pose or puppy dog position, tuck your right arm under your left armpit. And then try and bring your right ear to the mat. And just lean across that shoulder there. Rear delt in particular is gonna get hit. I'm reaching forward with my left hand. Thinking about squaring that left shoulder towards the mat, which is causing some pull and stretching in my right shoulder across the ground. And we hammered the shoulders earlier today. And all you have to do is breathe. Four in, four hold, eight out. All right, switch arms. So right from that position, I'm just gonna put my right arm out and tuck my left arm under, get that left ear onto the mat. And then I'm just gonna find that space where I can collapse in and feel that stretch. Don't be afraid to do these all throughout the day, hit them up. We've done a bunch of different ones over the last few weeks.
You might find one side is tighter than the other, more sore than the other. Completely natural. All right, come out of that, go into our plank. We're gonna finish with a minute of pigeon. So I'm bringing my right knee behind my right wrist. You could actually stay in a high pigeon here, send your left leg back, untuck your toes. Try and really keep that leg pointing at six o'clock. Squeeze that left glute to engage your hip flexors more or get a deeper stretch in your hips flexors. You could keep a high pigeon up here and really like sit into your hips or you could lower down to the ground is fine as well. You can rest your hands on your fists, one fist, two fists. You can go all the way down, settling in, adjusting hips towards the ground. Two, one, tuck your toes on your left, come back up the plank, left knee behind left wrist. Right leg is at six o'clock, I untuck the toes. Again, you could kind of stay high and focus on sending your hips down towards the ground. Or you could start walking your hands out and going towards the mat. We did a lot of work in our legs with those two wads to climb the ladders. Again, engage that right glute to release your hip flexor in your right side a little bit more. Opposing muscle groups work in tandem that way. All right. Come on out of that, as always. You should feel great about your work and your effort that you put in today. I'm always happy to have you here on a Tuesday, Thursday, or any other morning of the week for our CrossFit Hydesville Zoom. We have eight days left of Squattober, so make sure you're squatting. Or not, oh no, I'm sorry, nine days, 31. And uh, yeah, great seeing you all. I'll see you all next week. Good job today. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. Good, good right, job good talking one. during the side tap planks. <laughs> good job talking during the side taps. Those are, that has to be hard. <laughs> it's tricky sometimes, but I, I scale my weight so I can talk to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.